Now we've been talking about finding transits of Earth-sized planets, but we're particularly interested in finding Earth-sized planets in the habitable zone of sun-like stars. Let's find out what that means. Okay, who wants to be the sun? I All right. Okay, I need you to hold this. Okay, imagine that we're all outside, it's a cool night, and all we have is this campfire over here to keep us warm. Her whole upper body is the campfire. Okay, it's not just this, but her whole upper body is the campfire. Okay, I would like you to stand in front of that campfire where you would be comfortable on this cool night. Okay? Good. Now, he's representing the position of Earth around our sun. All right? He's at a comfortable distance. Is there liquid water on Earth? Yes. Lots of it, right? Yes. Okay. Now, why do you suppose I had him take his jacket off and I picked her because she's not wearing a jacket? We're going to use jackets to represent atmosphere. All right? So why, did I, why don't I want them to wear jackets? No atmosphere. Little or no atmosphere on Mercury and Mars. All right? Mercury has a temperature of about 800 degrees in the daytime. Is there going to be liquid water on Mercury? No. No. Too hot. Now Mars is way far away. And at, and at night it has a temperature of what? Yeah, 125 degrees below zero. Is there going to be liquid water on him? No. And then in the afternoon, it warms all the way up to four degrees below zero. Any liquid water during the day on Mars? No. No, too cold. It's always going to be frozen if there's any water on Mars. So, we talk, so the one thing was the distance, and the other thing we're going to talk about now is atmosphere. Little at, almost no atmosphere, very little atmosphere, but Earth has a nice, comfortable atmosphere keeping it warm and at the right distance from our sun. Wait, I forgot something. We're missing a planet over here. Oh my goodness, what's missing between Mercury and Earth? Venus. Venus. Will you be Venus for me? Okay, you want to come over here and stand right there between Mercury and Earth. Excellent. Now you're wearing a nice jacket and I'm going to give you this jacket too, okay? And now imagine that I'm throwing a big old blanket over her too. Is she going to be comfortable? No. No. What's happening there? Too warm. Too hot. too hot. You bet. Venus has a very dense atmosphere. And it always stays about 880 degrees Fahrenheit. Is there any liquid water on her surface? No. no way. Okay. So, so atmosphere makes a big difference. When a cloud of gas and dust collapses to form new stars, those stars come in different sizes, different masses. Small stars, medium stars, large stars. Now she's got a candle. She's a campfire. And this is a big old bonfire. What kind of star does this represent? A really big and hot one. A really big hot star, you bet. So this whole bo this, her, their whole bodies are, are going to be fire. And she, Remember, her upper body is fire, and all she's got is this little tiny candle. Now, would you, I'm going to give you a little planet, and would you stand in front of the red star and place your planet where it would be comfortable in front of that little red star. All right. Now, would you be Earth again and stand comfortably in front of our sun-like star? Okay. You want to stand in front of the bonfire? Okay, where would you stand to be comfortable in front of that big old hot bonfire? Way back, right? Each of you are standing in the habitable zone in front of your star. Is the habitable zone the same distance from each of these stars? No. No, it changes quite radically, doesn't it? Yes. 
Yes, good. And this right here is what the Kepler mission is trying to find. Earth-sized planets in the habitable zone of sun-like stars. 